Welcome to Devlog 2. This week my sprint goal is to add animal evolution to my game. Not for the player yet, but I want to be able to rederive the testing species you currently see in the encounter simulator, but in the evolution simulator. Here's our old friend, the Mish tree. First, I'll add a plant eater Mish. Unsurprisingly, no plant meets requirements, so the Mish is forever empty. Now, I directly insert the player's bug species into the Mish, so essentially a second abiogenesis. And now we got a bug. Now I can add a meat-eating niche easily, and while I could just add the other bug from the bug simulator, adding every species one by one isn't my goal. Instead, I'm trying to adjust these niches so that herbivores can evolve into carnivores. Here I meet a tricky problem. Right now, what you can eat is determined by your head. The green one eats plants, the red one eats meat. The selection pressure is also very simple. You can have a head with the right kind of digestion, you get a score of 1, otherwise it's 0. This means that the herbivore in the simulation won't occupy the carnivore niche, which means it will never be subject to the carnivore mutation strategies, which means it will never be able to occupy the carnivore niche. Ergo, carnivores cannot exist, checkmate atheists. So let's step back and look at the natural world we're trying to replicate. When the first animal crawled onto land in the Silurian, I assume it ate plants, since the only other food source is itself. So we've got a bunch of plants and a herbivore. What happens when those herbivores die? Were there 10 million years of dead bodies just piling up until some innovative genius came up with the idea of cannibalism? Let's investigate with science! And by investigate with science, I mean, let's talk to somebody else who already investigated with science! And by ask somebody else who already investigated with science, I mean, ask somebody who knows where to look up something, someone else who already investigated with science might have already written it down because I'm not interviewing anyone for my stupid video game. So I asked the theory team, and they converged on one basic answer. Life started as omnivores, and even now most species exist on a spectrum of herbivore to carnivore. Simple enough, the basic head now has some ability to eat meat, so for a brief time the only animal species fills both niches and preys on itself. I'll just say they're just scavengers right now. Now I want to specialize these niches into specific predator-prey relationships. For the prey-to-predator direction, this is pretty simple. We split the meat-eating niche into prey-catching niches for each possible prey. This introduces a new problem. Every predator species is now a prey species. With that new niche, you can now support a new predator, and the environment will increase in complexity indefinitely. Okay, let's come back to reality for a bit. In the real world, why doesn't this happen? Why doesn't every single apex predator just cause some even more apex predator to come into being? The answer, at least as far as I know, is energy. You can't support an infinite, or even equal, biomass of predators on a given mass of prey. Okay, let's add that into the simulation. Now, Mishus can produce energy just like the food sources of old, and in addition, Mishus will pass some of their energy on to their children. In a lot of these cases, we're looking at specialist cases of times where you get that energy and also survive, so a lot of Mishus don't generate their own energy. In the particular case of predation Mishus, the energy generated is going to be one-tenth, because that seems to be the rule in nature, of the energy that whatever species you were eating managed to get last time around. Now what about the opposite direction, the pressures that the predator puts on the prey? I can see a couple options. First, I can easily make a don't get eaten pressure, and add it as an extra niche on the end of the line for every species. Another option is to link the selection pressures of each prey. After all, we have a niche for eating the species, so we should know exactly what predator it is you're trying to avoid. Or do we? Species can have more than one natural predator. Is there a selection pressure in real evolution for not getting eaten by things that don't try to eat you right now but might? What about the fluke times that things eat things that aren't their natural prey? I don't know the answers to all this. For now, I'm going to stick to two principles I learned working as a software developer for Fortune 500 companies. The first is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. The second is the scream method. If you don't know if you need the component, turn it off and see if anybody screams. So for this iteration, every animal is just going to go through one big don't get eaten niche put right on top. If it crashes or it starts making ridiculous things happen in nature, then we'll know we need to revisit it. And that's all I've got right now. I hope you have questions, I hope I don't have the answer, cause then I've made you think. Moving forward, my next goal is to add a lot more parts, get some animal diversity in there, and make sure it evolves.